Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about sampling methods and how we select subjects for our experiment. This is a very important section, uh, especially for the AP people. They want you to know how sampling is done and how to do it correctly so we can trust our results, so the results are valid. We'll talk about that throughout the video. So you should have your notes out. You should probably be taking notes here. I will probably have assigned those to you in class. And you want to be able to distinguish between the different sampling methods and what are the strengths and weaknesses of each. So let's get ready. So how do we choose our participants? And it's really important that uh, our pool of participants is carefully selected. If we do that correctly, um, people have less questions about our control in our study and our results will be more valid, meaning that the results are likely due to our manipulation of the independent variable and not some other explanation. We want to typically use a random sample to select our participants, and I know people use that term quite a bit in research, but you want to be able to define this and explain this pretty precisely on not only how it's done, but why it's done. And you also want to focus on the term control during this video. Keep that in the back of your mind. And the target population, or what is the population we're studying. And remember, typically, population doesn't mean all the people in the world. It simply means the people that we are trying to make conclusions about. And that could be just freshmen at Peron Area High School, or that could be fifth graders in Dane County. The sampling method we use will determine how much control we have in, in large part over variables that could change the DV. We just want the IV to be the only thing that, that affects the DV, but if we sample correctly, um, we can eliminate a lot of other um, factors that could influence the DV. So sampling specifically involves selecting a subset of participants from your target population that you want to make conclusions about. And when you're operationalizing and describing your study, you're going to, you're going to talk about the population and what group of people this is and how you systematically choose your sample. So when we're sampling, we're focusing on the system or the technique involved for selecting those subjects. Sampling method refers to that technique or that system. How we take this population, say 3,000 students at Verona, um, middle school and high school, and how we select a few subjects from that group to be in our sample. We're going to talk about three or four sampling types here, so um, stay focused and make sure you can describe each one of those. Uh, we want a representative sample if possible. And a representative sample basically means that your sample is very similar and characteristic to the population. So our subset, our sample, is kind of, it kind of represents the, the population fairly accurately. It's very similar and characteristic. That way you can assume that if something happens to the sample in your study, they, their behavior changed somehow. Gosh, you know, they were really like the population in a lot of key ways. I bet you if we did this same condition, this IV manipulation for the population, we get similar results, which is really important if you're testing, you know, um, student techniques, how to be a better student. If it works for the subset, the sample, probably it'll work for the population as well. Here's some specific um, factors that you want to know. Remember, a representative sample means the sample is, is going to be similar in key characteristics to our, tar our target population. And let's say we're studying fifth graders at Verona. We want our sample of, say, 50 students to represent the key characteristics of all fifth graders in Verona. Say that's 400 students. And here's some uh, sampling techniques. Uh, one of the simple ones is volunteer sampling. This involves 
participants self-selecting themselves to take part in the study. They could be responding to an advertisement, or they could, could be getting paid. And, and this is probably one of the simplest ways to organize, or one of the simpler ways to organize. You know, you pay subjects, you could even give them candy bars or, or coupons for pizza. But the problem is you, you won't you might not attract all the different types of people represented in the population, only certain people who are interested in that prize. Maybe it's a candy bar, maybe it's five bucks. Some people might not think five bucks is worth it. So you're, you're not getting a representative sample, and that means your group, your subset, could be um, likely to display subject bias or selection bias in which the, the sample doesn't really represent all the key characteristics of the population. Another way to select a sample is opportunity sampling. This is probably the most widely used method because it's easiest and most convenient, and you can probably think about what that means. It basically means we gather subjects who are most easily available at, at the time you need subjects or wherever the location of your study. So sample bias and selection bias is certainly likely to happen here as, as only certain members of the target population are likely to be available. So if you're trying to get your sample of, of, you know, juniors in high school and you're just getting juniors from the commons during lunch for a lunch, you're probably going to have some selection bias. I might use students from a classroom, for example, as an opportunity sample. So a quick practice here, so you're going to pause this and think for a moment or two. How could I find an opportunity sample of participants in high school if I wanted to study the moral differences between male and female high school students. Pause and think about that. Um, how would an opportunity sample cause us problems with our results? You should have some time to think about that. We'll talk about that in class. Um, that is the type of sample that I used um, for my master's thesis on gender differences and more reasoning. I used an opportunity sample, and I had to discuss the weaknesses of that in my research. A random sample, this is the probably the most powerful type of sample we have, is a way of best um, representing the target population with a representative sample. It involves systematically selecting a number of subjects from the target population in which each person in the population has an equally likely chance to be selected. So it's totally random, um, and everybody has a, a likely chance to get selected. Remember, the, the people in the target population are sometimes referred to as the sampling frame. Now here's a question for you. Let's say you're a chef, and you've been simmering um, your specialty soup or maybe a chili, and you've let it simmer for about 20 minutes on the stove. Now you're coming over, your guests are arriving, and you want to get a last-minute sample taste to see if you need to add any spices, salt and pepper, oregano, garlic, something to that, basil, something to that sample. What would be the best method for you to make sure that you got a representative sample of the flavor of that whole pot? You think about that, and we'll talk about that in class tomorrow as well. So a random sample is the technique we use to select our subject. And this could be with a random numbers generator on a computer um, for large groups, or we could even draw names out of a hat if we're only using, say, 20 or 30 names in class. So either way, um, we're likely to get a, a random sample, which is likely to be resulting in the most valid data from our study. And validity simply means that the results we get um, on our DV is most likely due to our manipulation of the independent variable and not due to specific characteristics of the subjects per se. A stratified random sample requires that we randomly select participants from different subsets of the, subsets of the population. These subsets, like exist in our school, could be gender, um, could be age, could be race, could be socioeconomic status. So we've got all these subsets that exist in the population, kind of like a layered cake. If 
you want the best taste of that layered cake, you better make sure you get a sample from each layer to get the true taste. So if we were studying students in high school, the, the senior class, for example, how would we make sure we get, well, let's not even limit it to just seniors. What about the whole high school population? How would we make sure that we that, that all class members were represented? So can you think of ways that, A, we could get a sample of 50 students um, conveniently, opportunistically, volunteer-wise, or a random sample? How could we do this with students at the high school if we wanted a sample of 50 students? So you think about that, and we'll stop our video there. And remember to rewind if you need to, and we will talk about these in class, and we'll finish up with sampling in our next video. Thanks a lot.